Hello, Drone Racers. I'm Mark, and today on Drone Racer 101, we're going to go through the process of setting up your DJI goggles, because when you first power them on, you actually see this message. It tells you they're not going to work. You have to get them registered. It's a DJI product. Thankfully, I think this is going to be easier than it was with the goggles RE, but in this video, we're just going to go through the process of setting up and seeing if there are any updates for the goggles, for the module, and for the radio itself. We'll get them connected so they're functional, and then in the next videos, we're going to start doing some testing. Right now, these don't actually do anything. See, look, it's totally dark in there. So in order to set these up, you have to download some software from DJI. So we're going to start by going to DJI's website. So you can just go to the front page, and if you go to consumer products, you'll see the FPV goggles here on the front. We're going to go to the digital FPV system, not the older goggles. So here we go, and here's the descriptions and everything. We want to go up to downloads, and we're going to download. Here there's a release notes. Let's take a look at those real quick before we move on. So this shows what these are for. This is version 2. I would swear it still said version 2 when I did the Goggles RE, but maybe not. So this shows what it's for. It's DJI Goggles, DJI Goggles RE. The main ones we're concerned about is the FPV Goggles, the FPV Air Unit, and the FPV Remote Controller. So this covers what we need. So I'll go back here. I have a Windows machine, so I'm going to go ahead and load the EXE. So it has asked me to save it to my desktop, which is what I'm going to do to get this installed. We'll see if this goes better than it used to. It used to complain a lot. So here I've saved this to my desktop and I'm just going to go ahead and run it. Yes, I accept the terms. Um, I don't know what they say. If you want to read them, you probably should, but I don't, I don't have time for that. And if they want to take my firstborn, she had Asian studies last year, so she can move to China, I guess. Yes, accept, default, yes, next. Yes, I want a shortcut, install, just... I'm just going through the defaults and letting it go. Okay, so that took a minute. You didn't want to see the green bar move. Okay, let's launch it. Let's see what happens. So I got a warning saying the firewall protected it. I got a lot of warnings about this with the old software. This seems to at least be better. It was difficult to install before. See, I'm just, I'm just going to accept the defaults. Allow access. I agree again to the terms and conditions. I agree. Those privacy policy. Yeah, you have no privacy is probably what it says with DJI. So it's up to you, depending on how you feel about privacy, if you want to accept these or not, to allow them to access this software and the updates and information about your device. I'm okay with it for what I'm doing. It's the same way as I'm okay with Alexa monitoring what I say. I, I mean, I don't care what I say, because I don't say anything that's going to cause a problem. I was actually worried she was going to yell at me for trying to talk to her. But here we go. So you can read this and accept it or not. Product improvements. Yes, I want to improve the products. We want to make them better, right? Whether this is true or not, I guess we'll see. I believe we're going to have to have an account set up before we do this. I already have one from all my previous products, but I'm going to go ahead and connect it up in case you don't want to create an account to see what happens. I have the USB-C cable that it came with, so I'm going to plug this in and we're going to try and use that. If you didn't see my unboxing video, which you should have, this came with the goggles. It did not come with the radio, but you should have it either way. We're going to just plug it in. So it does not power on from this USB cable. Now we know, so because that's probably only five volts most of the time I think for USB, so it will not power on with this. I need to get a battery. We're gonna have a whole separate video on batteries for this because different people are gonna have different opinions. I need to do a little testing with it, but I'm gonna get a battery now to connect to it. So here I've got a uh, Fat Shark battery here that uh, I love this battery. I wanna see how well it works for these, but I've got that connected and plugged in now. We'll just set it right there. So on my computer it says we're setting up a device. We're setting up Pigeon. That's interesting. So there we go. Now it detected my goggles. Activate, start activation. See, there it is. It's going to make me log in. So if you don't have an account, you're going to have to set one up. I already have one, so I'm not going to go through that process. You've created accounts for things before. This isn't any different. Okay, so it let me sign in. So we're signed in. We're going to start activation now. There's my email address. Hopefully I remember to blur that out. Yes. <laughs> Again, again, the terms and uses and everything. Disclaimers, and yes, you can have all my kids. They're going back to school. Thank you, thank you, school system. All right, activation successful, that, that was it. So it says we have to activate all three of them separately. This is way easier than it was with the goggles RE. That's actually a good point. We're gonna keep lenses away from direct sunlight to avoid damage. Um, we'll point that out while I'm here. I've got these setting just on my desk like this and that would be a problem if I was outside. If I was outside and the sun was shining down, that could ruin these. So uh, I guess I appreciate that disclaimer. Again, product improvement. Yes. Take one minute to complete a survey. New firmware available 1.0. Strongly recommended. 
Fixed lots of stuff. Added the ability for storage mode in the air as a override or stop. So here it added the ability to support S bus or DJI HDL. That is actually really, really important. Um, optimize, optimize, restart, restart, confirm. So now it's going to download and update the goggles. While it does that, let's take a look at the survey. I am in the United States. In case you didn't know, I am in the United States. I am mostly uh, main purpose of my flying. I mean, I'm not, despite the name of the channel, I don't actually go to any races. Yeah, I would say flying freestyle slash reviews. Where did I buy them? I bought mine from the DJI store. Um, I actually have a link down below where you can get them. I have it linked to multiple places so you can find them all in one handy link. Where did you first hear about these? Well, I heard about these from a handy YouTuber. Drone Racer 101. You should contact him and send him free stuff in the future. And done, I guess. Four of seven answered. Did I skip questions? I don't know. All right, we're still updating. Oh, now we were downloading. Now we're updating. We're going to have to go through this for each one of these products. And uh, I mean, at least it's easy. Holy cow, is this easy. You probably didn't need this video, but somebody's going to find it beneficial, right? Who couldn't figure it out? I don't know. Wow, it's not fast. I'm definitely going to say that. All right, finally. Uh, so it finished the upgrade to version one. We'll see how long it takes to come out with new versions. Go back. There we go. Let's take a quick look. That is current. That is the latest version. Uh, let's see if it, what's in the release notes. Oh, these are the same things that they showed us earlier. Okay. So go back. Connected devices are just the goggles. So I'm going to power off and unplug the goggles, and we're going to do the next one. Let's do the radio next. So I've got the radio here. I'm gonna plug it in. I'll probably have to turn it on. I did charge it overnight. So now I've got uh, four bars on the bottom here. Four dots, whatever. Computer doesn't seem to have recognized it. So I will turn it on. Typical DJI, you, you press and then you press and hold. And then the lights will go across and it will turn on. So Windows said the same thing, setting up pigeon. Okay, so there we go, DJI. FPV remote controller, we'll just click it, start activation, same email address, same terms and conditions and disclaimers and all the stuff, just click through, whatever. Again, reminding me they have to be activated separately, so we'll connect and it's probably gonna have to go through a firmware update again. This looks to me like the same thing that the other one said. And we'll download and update. Ooh, that was a lot faster. Downloading went way faster. While I was waiting for that, I only had time to do one post on Discord. Oh, okay, downloaded fast, but it's still taking forever, forever to upload. Oh, at 41%, it beeped. And then jumped to 60. Come on. It's only been like a minute and a half, but come on. It's gonna take an all day just to upload this software before I get to fly anything. I was playing with the goggles since they finished, but we're at 100% here. It should just be go back and see what's there. There we go, that's it. That's all for the radio. Now we've got one more with the air unit. So again, to turn this off, click, and then click and hold. It'll turn off with a typical DJI sound. Here's the part I'm curious about. One thing I will recommend is connect your antennas before you plug this in. Um, I bet DJI has some really good tech in here so you're not gonna ruin things, but for FPV, you always wanna have antennas connected whenever you have anything powered on. Whether it's transmitter or receiver, normally with the goggles, you don't have to worry about it because they're only receiving, but these goggles, that's not the case. They're actually transmitting? No, they're not. Mm. The goggles are already transmitted and received. I don't think these do. In either case, always have your antennas attached before you plug anything in. So what I'm curious about is whether the USB cord will power this or not. I was really hoping it would, so I didn't have to wire it up just to update it. But it does not seem like it's going to. That's unfortunate. It's mm. annoying. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna have to rig up my testing rig for this now, rather than wait while I update. So you stay here while I go get something put together. So in order to set this up before you can actually fly it, you can put it in a model and then everything will work. But some of you who are gonna have this set aren't gonna have models or any experience setting this up. So if you wanna set it up 
outside of a model, here's a couple things you're gonna need. I have a 4S battery, a 3S, a 4S battery would be fine with an XT60 connector. Uh, I really like this brand. If you're just getting started, GNBs are some of the best. I'll have a link below for everything that I'm gonna show here for setting it up. So what you have is you have the cord that comes with your goggles. So you have the cord that comes with your goggles. This is an XT60 connector. So this is what connects to, and that's what most of these batteries are gonna have. This has been the industry standard for a while. So all you have to do is plug this in and then plug this into your goggles. Uh, and it'll, they'll power on and it'll work fine with this. I'm gonna do some testing on the best batteries for the goggles, but for now, this cord that it comes with will work just fine. So this though, I was hoping for registration would power up from USB, but it didn't. So I've got my cable here. I actually bought a couple of these just for this reason. We're gonna use these two connectors, basically the positive and negative. These are what will power the system. We're not gonna use any of these other connectors for this. I don't really wanna leave those exposed though, so I'm actually gonna cover those up. I have some heat shrink here. Uh, I actually don't need that much. So I'm gonna start with just cutting this in half. I'm gonna slide this on these connectors. I will also link this heat shrink kit that I've got here below. To shrink the heat shrink, you can use a lighter. Um, I use a heat gun that I stole from my wife's scrapbooking kit. There we go. That'll shrink those up so now they uh, aren't exposed wires. And I can always take those off later and reuse this. But I'm making a testing rig to get it powered and registered and do some testing with. I also have an XT60 connector here. This is the same connector that came that connects on the battery. Uh, that will allow me to connect this module directly to a battery for testing. The large size is red positive and the narrow end, the crimped end, I guess, maybe angled end is negative. Okay, so I've got some uh, no clean flux paste here. I'm gonna put just a dab on the inside here. That's probably way too much actually. There we go. So I've got just a kit of uh, heat shrink here. I'll grab the yellow, ends up being the right size to go over here, I'll cut it in half. So unfortunately when these wires are this small, you can't really, I mean, I, the heat shrink, I would have to put layers on here. Normally I would use wires that were like the same size as the XC60 connector, but these are just here, but they're really, really, really tiny. I am gonna put the heat shrink on here though, just to make sure everything's not exposed. It won't make it stronger like I normally would like, but it'll at least keep it from being exposed. I like to use a set of adjustable wrenches. I've got a Weller soldering station that's heating up right now. And solder, this is just what I use. You can use whatever you've got available. If you already have some, great. If not, like I said, links below. Okay, this tip is actually way too big for what I'm doing here, but it'll work. Okay, I'm gonna pre tin the pad here and just uh, put some solder in here to get the wire to stick to. There we go. I do not need a lot in this case. Just flip it over, do the same thing. There we go. Now I've got the negative side there. I'm gonna have to pull this apart a little more to get the heat shrink on here. There we go, there's the negative side. These wires are already pre so I don't need to put solder on those. So I'm just gonna put it on the side here, melt all the solder and get it all melted together. Now let this cool just a little bit before you move the heat shrink. If you move it up there too fast, it might not fit. It'll actually shrink before you get it all the way around. So now I can fit this around here, fit that over and shrink it. Make sure I move this extra piece out of the way or else it'll be ruined. So you can see here, it's not really grabbing the wire, which is normally what I would like to make it stronger, but this I'm just using for testing. It doesn't make all that much of a difference. Other side, make sure we put the heat shrink on before connecting it. If you're new to soldering, you will forget Everyone forgets, everyone does it wrong. Don't worry, just undo it, re-solder it. I'm gonna add a little more solder here. I don't think I got quite enough. I don't know how well you can see, but I like it so the wire is actually touching the copper surround. We're not passing a lot of amps through here. It does not really matter for these little bitty connectors. Oops, see there? I didn't wait quite enough. It was still too hot and the heat shrink started to shrink as soon as I touched it. It's already on there tight. If I hadn't gotten it lined up right, it would have uh, not worked. There, now I have a test rig. So I've got my cable connected just to a battery connector. That will allow me to power on this unit so we can go back to the bench and get it registered. Okay, now back here on the bench with my connector here, I'm going to uh, plug this in with an XT60 to my battery. I'm gonna double check 
the wiring to make sure, yeah, red to red, black to black, that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my USB. Actually, no, I'm not gonna plug in the USB. I'm gonna plug in the power first, just, just to be sure, just to be extra sure. There, and we'll plug this in here. I see a, there's a red light here, that seems good. Now we'll plug in the USB. There we go, same thing. Now it says setting up pigeon. FPV air unit, so there we go. That was, that's not too bad. You just have to make sure you have all the stuff. And if you only have a Mavic, you might not have that stuff. Same thing, same deal. Let's go through here, complete. Oh, let me guess, you have to update. I bet, I would bet money. Oh, look at that. There we go. Here we go again, last time. Third time's a charm, right? Ooh, avoid touching the air unit, it'll increase. Is it hot? Mm, a little. So now we should be able to actually bind things together. Let's go through that. Okay, now I'm gonna get everything bound together now that it's updated and registered. So first thing we're gonna do is power on the goggles. I'm gonna use this uh, connector here or this battery here. I'm not sure this is the best battery. I like it, and if they work, I will really love it. But I'm gonna do some more testing on that, as I've mentioned. So we're gonna power on that. I'm gonna power on the modules. It says in the manual that you're supposed to power on, or you're supposed to bind the goggles and the module first before you do the radio. So we're gonna do these first. There's a red button. Let's see, can you see that? Right? There, see that little dot there? So we've got that there. On the module, it's a little easier. It's right there underneath. So in order to press that button, I'm gonna recommend you use a toothpick or some kind of non-conductive material. I could only find the toothpicks from my uh, six-year-old daughter's birthday, so it has a heart on it. I don't think you can have a better toothpick than one with a heart on it. So here we go, I'm gonna press... I'm gonna... The hard part I've got here is getting you to be able to see the modules here. So I'm just gonna tell you what this says. If I press the button, they beep, and they're beeping. There we go. It didn't actually say anything in there. I'm gonna do the same thing here. There we go. Oh, and there we go, they bound, you could hear it. Now I have video, which is really bad because I have the, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God, that's amazing. Oh my God. That's insane. Holy crap. Okay, before I get too, before I get too carried away. Holy cow, I've got to do the same thing here. So now we do the same thing on the radio. I'm going to power it on, press and then press and hold. You press and let go and then you press and hold. So there's the radio. And on the radio, this is a weird, weird combination that you've got to do. So what you have to do here, what is my light all messed up? Here you press the record button, this button, they call the C button I think, and then the dial here, which is actually a button. It's a momentary switch. So I'm curious to see how we can use that in beta flight. So I'm gonna press record, C, and then here. There we go. Now, same type of sound, I'm gonna press this button again. There we go. There we go, we heard it. So that meant the radio is now bound. Now we have a green light here and that is bound with the module as well. So now we could actually get input and output and transmission and holy cow, that's amazing. So binding, actually really easy. The hardest part is knowing how to press on the radio. I'm gonna power these goggles off now for a second. Okay, so I had to put an SD card in here so I could record. So here's the goggles, there's my wall. There's a little bit of pixelation, just a tiny bit, but that is unlike anything I have ever seen before. That is just amazing. Oh my gosh, it, it's like, it's actually transmitting HD. Wow. 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 So that's gonna be the end of this video. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe and let me know below what else you wanna see. I have lots of things planned, but I wanna make sure I cover everything that you want to see. Until next time, remember, this, this angle's really bad because you can see my double chin.